Philip, we both know there are many, many dozens of uh, fairly sophisticated theories of consciousness. Uh, what I did recently, a landscape of consciousness, and more than 200 examples. Uh, you've obviously uh, been a major proponent of panpsychism. I want you to step back from that, actually, as a philosopher, philosopher of mind, philosopher of science, um, and, 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 and say, with all the, these theories, what are some of the methodologies, the ways of thinking that you would use to evaluate theories? That's a great question. I, I think it's very important to distinguish the scientific and the philosophical tasks to do with consciousness. I think of the scientific task as more which kinds of brain activity go along with which kinds of conscious experience. Generally, I'm going to leave that to the scientists. I've got opinions, but I'm going to leave it to the scientists. But in terms of the philosophical question, it's, it's this ancient question we traditionally call the mind-body problem. How do consciousness and the physical world connect up? Is the physical world fundamental and consciousness emerges out of that? Is consciousness fundamental, the physical world emerges out of that? Or the dualist option, probably the most popular throughout the history of humanity, mm. that both consciousness and the physical world are equally fundamental but radically distinct. Now, the problem is, at least in certain forms, all of these philosophical options are empirically equivalent. You know, for any scientific data, they're all able to account for that data in very different ways, but you can't do an experiment to work out which is correct. So this does lead to, to a deep problem. How do we evaluate them? How do we know which is correct? I think we could, we, we could apply two criteria. One, we could think about the kind of theoretical virtues we find in science, things like simplicity, elegance. I think this, this makes a prima facie case for going away from dualism, right? Because dualism has two kinds of thing at the fundamental level of reality, consciousness and physical reality, whereas both Panpsychism on the one hand and physicalism on the other both just have one kind of thing at the fundamental level. The physicalist says it's just physical stuff, the panpsychist says it's just consciousness stuff, but that's a simpler worldview. So I think that gives us some prima facie reason to push in, away from the dualist option. Another thing we can look at is how well have these theories done on their own terms? in terms of their explanatory aims, right? So the, the physicalist aims to explain consciousness in terms of physical processes in the brain. The panpsychist aims to do it the other way around, explain physical reality in terms of some more fundamental story about consciousness. So we can ask how well have those explanatory projects gone? Have they realized their explanatory aims? My view is, Panpsychism is doing a lot better on that score than <laughs> physicalism, but you know, that's going to be a matter of debate. So I, I would think about those two things, simplicity and explanatory power. How well have these theories done in explaining what they're trying to explain? Some people say, of course, that if it's not subject to the scientific method, it is uh, really in, inadmissible in, uh, in, in building um, attitudes towards reality. There are things outside of that, maybe morality. And, uh, various artistic experiences, but if you're going to deal with anything that's real, you need the scientific me method. Uh, I distinguish between the scientific method, which is experimentation, replication, falsification, uh, measurement, uh, from a scientific way of thinking, which involves uh, in internal consistency, coherence, lack of contradiction, uh, explanatory power, possibly parsimony, although that's not not, 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 not an absolute necessity. Um, and that some major categories of theories of consciousness uh, don't lend themselves to that because they are not physically based. And therefore, you cannot use the scientific method of experimentation to, to assess those. But you can use the scientific way of thinking uh, to, to assess those. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really nice way, nice way of putting it. But, I mean, actually, people have this idea that physicalism is the scientific approach. But actually, 
I mean, I think, I would argue that the scientific data on consciousness is, is actually neutral between all of these options, physicalism, panpsychism, dualism. Mm. And the reason for that is that consciousness is not a publicly observable phenomenon. Right? I can't look in your brain and see your feelings and experiences. Mm -hmm. We know about consciousness in, in a very different way, just from our immediate awareness of our own feelings and experiences. So we have t two things we know about in very different ways that we need to bring together. One is the physical world we know through our senses. And one is consciousness that we know about just through being conscious, being immediately aware of our feelings and experiences. Mm. How, and about, we need to bring them together. how about quantum theories? Mm. Well, the fascinating thing about quantum mechanics is it's our best scientific theory. It's so much of our technology is based on it. And yet there is no consensus on what it's telling us about reality. Right. The foundations of quantum physics yeah. is a big debate. That's a, you know, a really unusual situation. You know, usually a scientific theory, it's pretty clear what it's telling us about the world. And it follows that there is a crucial role for philosophy in our scientific understanding of reality, because there are these different interpretations of quantum mechanics, and it's a question of philosophical judgment, which is more plausible. Well, I've actually been working on with the philosopher of physics, Kelvin McQueen, about whether we can bring together panpsychism and the many worlds interpretation oh. of, of quantum mechanics. <laughs> so the many people might be surprised that the many worlds interpretation is one of the most popular among philosophers yeah, yeah, of sure. physics. Yeah, yeah. Th this, this, this interpretation where reality keeps splitting into yeah, different that, branches. That creates and as much incredulity as panpsychism. It does, but <laughs> But I think there's a, there's a pretty good case. It's, it's, it's the interpretation which is closest to the mathematics, the, the basic mm. mathematics of quantum physics. And actually, this is something that's become more apparent over time as we've worked out the mathematics in a bit more detail. But there's a big problem with the many worlds. How does it make sense of probability? How do you make sense of probability in a world where everything's going to happen? Right? Mm. So like, if you think of Schrodinger's cat, right? we, we could set the Schrodinger's cat experiment up. So there's a 75% chance there's going to be a living cat and a 25% chance there's going to be a dead cat. But on the many worlds interpretation, you're 100% <laughs> certain you're going to get both. Right. So the, 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 the view we've been playing with is takes the many worlds, but then adds that all the consciousness goes down one of the branches, right? <laughs> so maybe you're con Maybe your consciousness is going to go down the branch where there's a living cat. Maybe your consciousness is going to go down the branch where there's a dead cat. And the hope is we can make sense of probability again. Because when we talk about probability, we're talking about the probability that your consciousness is going to go down a particular branch.